When creating a new class in the free version of Seesaw, you have several different options to choose from as far as how you're going to import your students. So let's go over those different ways. The first thing that you're going to do is log into Seesaw and then you're going to click on your teacher name up at the top and you're going to click on create new class. And here is how you're going to start to choose your kids. Um, one option that if you already have a Google Classroom, you can click import from Google Classroom and pull those children from there. If you don't have a Google Classroom, then we're going to go old school and add those kids a different way. So I'm going to name this class um, Abby's class. And we're going to let them be kindergartners. I'm going to click my green check mark. And let's create the class. So here is our sample class. Down at the bottom, we can see that we have a plus students button. We're going to click on the plus students button. And here's our first question. Do we want students to sign into Seesaw using their Google account or email address? So even if your students have a Google account or an email address, it depends on how you want your classroom to run. If you have very small children or if you're using iPads that you're going to have the same iPad being used by multiple children, you may want to choose the no option even if they do have their own login. You're going to find out what's best for you as you start to use Seesaw more and more. If your students are on Chromebooks, you're going to want to choose yes because if they're already logged in on a Chromebook, they've already logged in to Google, so that part's already over. So for the first part, let's go ahead and pretend like this group is logging in on Chromebook, so we're going to choose yes. We'll go back in a moment and choose no and see how that looks. So let's say yes. So if your students were on a Chromebook or a device that you wanted them to log in to their Google, with their Google email address, this is the process that they would follow. They would go to Seesaw, they would choose I'm a student, and the very first time that they logged into Seesaw, they would put in this code. Now this code only lasts for a week, but they're only going to use it the first time. Once they've used that code one time, they're in your class until you kick them out. So you're only going to need it that one time or when you have new students. And when you get a new student, it will generate a new code. After that, they're in there. So your students will populate over here and you'll see your students logging in over here. Alternately, you would say, okay, maybe I don't want them to use the, um, the Google email. So I would say no. So you would choose, are they gonna be on shared devices or are they gonna have one-to-one -one devices? So for this purpose, we're gonna say that they are gonna be on shared devices. Maybe I have only two or three iPads in the classroom and we're gonna rotate You know who's using them when. So I'm going to add my students one by one. Or if I have a list somewhere on my computer, I can paste a list. So I'm going to put some kids in. Maybe I have Bugs Bunny and I have Spider-Man and I have Batman and maybe Superman. Okay, there's my kids. And I have added my students. Now I have another list of instructions but I have a difference right here. This is the code for them to scan. So if they're on a device that has a camera, as soon as they go to Seesaw or the Seesaw app, they're going to choose I'm a student and click scan the code and a camera will pop up and they'll scan the QR code and instantly they'll be popped into 
into your classroom. Now, here is the major difference when you do it this way. When the student gets in and they are logged in, they are not necessarily logged in as Batman or Bugs Bunny or Spider-Man or Superman. They are logged in just to the class. So when they go to an activity and they start to um, and they start to post that, as they start to work on it, they're going to have to choose. Oh yeah, my name is Batman or my name is Bugs Bunny. They're not going to. Uh, it's not going to be locked to their account. So they might mistakenly or sometimes on purpose choose to post to somebody else. So that's kind of a risk you have to take if you choose to do the QR code login rather than the um, lock to your Google account login. Also, that allows them to post to one assignment multiple times rather than just the one time that the Google account login would lock them to. With the Google account, when they uh, when they do an activity, once they turn it in, it's turned in and it's there. They can't go back and do another one unless you reassign it. Um, let's look at some different things that you can do with the students now that you've got those in. If you'll click the wrench up at the top, here's where you would manage students. So you see that I have my four students. This sample student is pretty much you to go in and pretend to be a student to show your kids how to do what you want them to do. So let's say that Batman really did not want to be this mouse. He wanted to be something cooler. I can change his first name, last name, his display name, or his icon. I can choose one of these. Maybe Batman really wanted to be a snake. Or I could click use photo and upload a photo of the child himself. Now, there's no save button. There's no, I choose this one. You can kind of see there's a little blue rim around it. I just click the back button and we see that it's changed. I can add an email or his family members, a learning student code. I don't mess with any of that. I just normally change the icon. Or I could remove the student for class uh, from the class if you know, he switched classes or if he moved out or something. And that's about that. Now, I can also turn off any of these toggle switch just for this child, but I can also take, um, or I can turn off these for my kids. So if I want them to not be able to see each other's work, or if I want them to be able to edit their items, or um, enable the, the sample student or not, I can do that. All right, so those, that is quickly how to add students if you're using the free version of Seesaw. Now, if your district or school has purchased the uh, Seesaw for Schools version and you have the subscription to that, the addition of students is put in in a totally different way. So this video is not for you. This is for teachers that choose to do this on their own using the free version of Seesaw.